Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X. Look at Chinese Romland in the past week. For the past week, it was Chinese New Year, the biggest holiday of the year. It would be a very sad thing if a lot of people are still working. Still, we have a couple of things, so let's go through them one by one. First, as I'm recording this video on the 27th, a drama should have just gone live on Hunan Television and Mango TV called 今生也是第一次 For the first time in my life, it is led by Wang Ziwen, Tang Yixin, Hu Xing Er. This is a contemporary drama focused on three female royals who are born in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They're all giving birth to babies. Three different mom story of becoming mother for the first time in their life at a different age. Let's see how well that drama is gonna perform. I will try my best to check on it. No promises yet. Then we have some news on a few different dramas at different stages of production. First, there is an ITE light on me Wu Ju Chang, a suspense crime thriller drama that is likely to go live very soon. It is called Hui Xiang, English title Echo. Song Jia Wang Yang. Anybody who's watched a lifelong journey, okay, they are a couple in that drama. Part of the drama, okay, not the whole drama, but some part of the drama. And I really dig their coupling. They look so good together. And I like both actor actresses a lot. So when this drama airs, whenever that is, I'll definitely check it out. Our female lead played by Song Jia is a police woman and there's murder, there's kind of serial killer. Fingers crossed it's gonna air very soon. The other thing about this drama is it's directed by Feng Xiaogang, the film director, who hasn't really done very well when he ventured into television series. That drama he did, which was a pretty big failure. So this time it's a thriller. Let's see if that works. Also during this week, a drama has wrapped or pretty much it's like right before Chinese New Year so that the crew managed to actually go home and have a holiday. Good for them. Which is the drama contemporary one, 我们的翻译官, Our Interpreter. I have talked about this before. It's led by Song Qian and Chen Xinxu. And the title is pretty much the spoiler. You know exactly what you're uh, going in for. I cannot wait to see Chen Xinxu in a contemporary drama in suits. He looks really good uh, based on production shots and he's at the low point of his body weight, <laughs> I'd say in his career. He's one of those people who unfortunately has to stay skinny to look good on camera. Since it's a contemporary drama, it probably will come out even like within the first half of the year. Let's hope for that. Also, during the Chinese New Year break or pretty much like right before it, the drama that has started shooting very recently, December, that I've talked about, 一九九爱. A story of youth and love, the Yang Zi and Fan Chen Chen led a group of people growing up in the same place and then focusing on their high school and then many years later as they become adults. Story that features a lot of <laughs> different people. That drama has officially released its first within the drama production shots and posters to give you an idea of what it will look like, the vibe. Then during this week, even though it's holiday, we still have one piece of news about a drama that has announced that the project is a go. They're gonna start making it very soon, a period drama based on existing novel as most of the dramas these days are. Song Zuar and Liu Yuning, Zhe Yao. English title, The Prisoner of Beauty. And the synopsis is uh, about kind of two families at odds with each other. And the girl from one family has to marry into the guy's family for political alliance, but they're not really seeing eye to eye to each other, the families. So it's the type of marry first and fall in love later. And then that actually solves the problem for the two families, but also helping that city and that stronghold and everyone to, to have a better life, that type of story. Very typical. <laughs> let's say, novel and story. Song Zuar is even smaller in size, say, like visually, right? When you think about her and then Zhao Lu Si. So when Zhao Lu Si was pairing with Liu Yuning in that Daily Rabai drama, you know, huge contrast of size is like a huge thing that people dig. So for Song Zuar to be paired up with Liu Yuning, that's gonna be an even bigger difference. Very, very big guy and very, very small girl. Well, let's hope that pairing will work out some kind of magical chemistry. Liu Yuning is so busy. He literally just finished filming the drama with Liu Shishi and now he's in another pair of drama. I wonder, you know, like who is the PR and agency 
person responsible to get him all those roles. That that person or that team is like really on steroids. Then during Chinese New Year's break, the good news comes to the drama Knockout that is still airing and will very soon finish airing right on the first day of February, if I haven't remembered wrong. On iQIYI, it has finally climbed to the top heat popularity level drama of all times. Ever since iQIYI started to implement this scale system of how popular drama is, calculating the view count, peak time performance, comments, all that into consideration. Last year, the top drama was Chang Lanjue, and this drama is higher than that. And just as I was like sitting down making this video, the new number comes out. It has broken the record of 11,000, officially putting Knockout onto the first position of dramas ever aired on this platform. Congratulations. <laughs> All I can say is that, and also because it's Chinese New Year and it's right at the beginning of a new year, they really picked the right one to throw out at the this time and perform this well. I guess like the people who are responsible for this drama and also within IQE's drama department are having champagnes. It's a really good drama, okay? I will talk about it probably after it has finished airing since it's gonna finish airing very soon. So the ideal thing would be once it finishes airing, talk about it. Then to wrap up today's video, Let's end it with film since uh, it's still Chinese Spring Festival film slot and not even bloodbath It's like nuclear war is going on in Chinese cinema I will talk about that a little bit But first because of the like the fight that's going on between films that is so fierce 中国乒乓, Chinese ping pong Chinese table tennis that film that's Yu Bai Mei Deng Chao and also led by Deng Chao and Sun Li decided to quit they retreated and it's like we do not want to get into this fight because we're not gonna get any money out of this clearly it's a fight between that 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 film no position for us so they pulled their film off on the third day i think of the chinese new year and announced they're gonna go into the valentine slot which is february 17 ish that's when they're gonna <laughs> release this film chinese ping pong ran away that sounds so funny for some reason i mean i totally understand commercially business-wise very wise decision so what's going on in chinese spring festival film slot right now is after about three days leading into chinese new year it became clear that this time the fight for the first position in the box office performance is going to be between zhang yimou's man jiang hong full river red the period setting spy murder thriller film and wandering earth 2 liu lang di qiu right now man jiang hong is on top but this is only the first week of Chinese Spring Festival. Tomorrow, everybody's gonna go back to work. And so that's gonna change how all the strings schedule film, also prices, also who would go where and watching it in what way. So usually for the Chinese Spring Festival slot, if you look at it, you think about it as the first part and second part. The first leg is the holiday when everybody is off. The second part is holiday is ending, but the films usually stay in cinema for half a month to a month time. So something may still change. During this week, a lot of like rather ugly things have been going on in Chinese cinema. Mostly actually not to do with the film itself or even the filmmakers, but the promotion. Because promotion is huge for films. Usually it can take up like 30 to 40 percent of your entire budget but certain promotional tactics of certain film is something that is so really low class i haven't seen that to that extent and to that level ever in chinese cinema but this year we're seeing it i'm not gonna point out the name but if you do a little bit of research you're gonna find out it's pretty despicable certain films are doing that a lot of people are complaining and you see a lot of <laughs> content creators like jumping out and just like in most sarcastic ways talking about certain films tactics of like ruthlessly shamelessly trying to grab money from people and then whatever using whatever connections they have blah 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 to just make the competition unfair but anyway, we are not gonna talk too much about that. <laughs> it's weird, you know, for my channel, like I speak in English and I'm mostly facing international audiences and then talk about these things that like no Chinese domestic people would really care about. In terms of like, they wouldn't come and watch my videos and see how I talk about it. Like, so it's kind of like irrelevant what I say. And also you don't need to know these things, you know. It's very negative, basically. The energy surrounding it is just so nasty. It's like, yeah, I'd rather look at prettier, nicer 
things and cats and bunnies and cute animals did these type of crappy things during Chinese New Year. So if you just like got super confused about what I just rented about, ignore that, ignore that. You know, sometimes I just no, you can't control, can't control what goes on between my brain and mouth, you know, although it's only that bit of a distance, but sometimes it's the furthest distance on planet Earth or even in the universe. Ah, whatever. Thank you for watching Avenue X. <laughs> I promise I'll, I'll look much n more normal, okay, in my next video when I actually talk about a specific drama. Also, like, since my channel passed, like, 100k, I'm just wondering what YouTube is gonna do because supposedly people are gonna get those little things, right? Like, when you pass 100k or a million subscribers, you're gonna get those things from YouTube. I don't know if they still send them because I haven't got contacted by anybody <laughs> yet. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. I'm just curious. I just remembered before I woke up this morning and think, oh, did anybody contact me about like sending me that thing? Not yet? Hmm, okay, whatever. Maybe they're also having Chinese New Year. Please take care. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.